Uh, continuing what we were talking about in the in the earlier presentation, uh, we do have some interesting updates on our work with the ITU focus group on AI for natural disaster management, uh, the GNSS enhanced tsunami early warning topic group. And I would like to thank all of my, my co-authors and especially those who got up early to uh, help with this presentation today. And so we're just going to go over a bit of, bit of the background following on uh, John's presentation, and then uh, representatives of uh, both of our uh, subtopic uh, groups will uh, present their recent pro progress and discoveries, and then we'll uh, open the floor for next steps and, and perhaps some interesting discussion. So as I mentioned uh, just a few moments ago, uh, we've been working on connecting geodesy with the United Nations initiatives, and uh, the contribution to of the G2's report in 2017 uh, to eventually the uh, the UN uh, Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction, which is usually called the GAR, uh, is is a major uh, way of communicating that geodetic observations have a clear role in helping us to reduce the risk of disasters as well as contribute to disaster preparedness with better mitigation and response. Following on the information about our work with, with GEO, uh, we saw this as a, a great opportunity to engage with a, an organization that does a lot of work in different earth observations techniques that has a, uh, a, a mandate to uh, support earth observations for disaster risk reduction. And we were able to establish a, a community activity, which is kind of a uh, in, in their um, structure, it's, it's a bit like a, a study group or a, um, a basic working group, if you think about it like that. And so uh, we've been working with them uh, recently. Uh, we've had the great uh, opportunity that uh, their new disaster risk reduction coordinator, uh, seconded from Japan, Ru Rui Kotani, has been uh, tremendously uh, enthusiastic about supporting uh, the, the contributions of geodesy to GEO. And so we're very thankful and fortunate to have her support. Um, she just came on to the, uh, the Secretariat staff a few months ago. And so uh, through GEO, we have the opportunity to uh, ident further identify how geodesy can contribute to Earth observations and as well as how to uh, make sure that we can uh, take care of policy and advocacy uh, on behalf of geodesy using the, the tools and the convening power of GEO. Now our topic group A, on AI for natural disaster management work uh, includes AI for geodetic enhancements to tsunami early warning detection. And this project is really looking to explore the feasibility of using AI for novel decentralized domestic processing of GNSS data in countries where it is either uh, not possible to on, not possible, not allowed to export this real-time data uh, by law, or that uh, the actual in internet bandwidth capacity is insufficient to be able to really share the raw data at, or to send it to a, an offshore analysis center. Uh, the, proje the project hopes to establish protocols for development and sharing of export permitted data derived products through artificial intelligence, federated machine learning, or a combination thereof. And this would ultimately enable the sharing of life saving geodetic real time tsunami risk information uh, within the parameters of data export restrictions, or as I noted, also uh, to help uh, places that normally wouldn't be able to uh, contribute through, uh, through infrastructure limitations. And so we have here our uh, subtopic groups. We've uh, established two uh, complementary but uh, unique uh, technical subtopics, uh, one on navigation, seismology, and displacement that's led by uh, John Rundle with Shunichi Koshimura, and a subtopic on ionosphere and total electric contact that's led by Attila Komyothi and uh, technical co-leads of Mattia Crespi and Mikla Ravanelli. And so our initial use case uh, was actually uh, looking more at the, uh, the total electron content, the ionospheric ang uh, angle of this. And the great thing about uh, our, the way that this is structured in 
uh, within the ITU is that you can submit multiple use cases. So this is just an example of the initial use case that, that we submitted uh, when we were first um, exploring this concept with the ITU. And, uh, and Attila will explain uh, much, much more about this, so I'm not going to take up any more, more time on that. And so uh, I pass the baton over to Attila. Um, I can keep sh showing the slides. So uh, Attila, if you want to just say next, I will be happy to advance the slides for you. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Michaela. Wait, uh, thanks very much. So so um, I'd like to, uh, but the next presentation is, is really about tsunami scale, John Rando. Shall I? Oh, I'm sorry. I? This is, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, it was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> David, uh, okay. David was going yeah, to very, present. I'm very sorry. John and David, do you want to take over? <laughs> sure. I will come up after after this slide. I'm uh, sorry. I, I completely uh, flipped that around my head. My apologies. Okay. So, so David is having some trouble with his microphone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, David, are you there? Um, so anyway, uh, David, if you're there, just break in. Um, yeah, the yeah, tsunami. Um, okay, great. So you can take okay. over. Sorry, the, uh, yeah, internet problems. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't know where we left off, but I'll just start over. So basically, yeah, tsunami squares is a cellular automata-based tsunami simulator. Um, the key features of it is that it's low, uh, has a low computational cost and can trivially simulate uh, from water to land. So we make no distinction between uh, water and land squares. So inundation is very trivial. Um, so recently improvements have been made to the underlying algorithm. And so basically uh, this reduces its dependence on a smoothing algorithm, which basically smooths out any anomalies that might happen. And so basically the smoothing algorithm is necessary for the uh, simulation to function, and uh, so basically the result is that we have this original algorithm which produces this very smooth wave, you can see uh, on the picture on the left, and with the modified algorithm uh, we can see that uh, all of the smoothing is reduced and we're left with a more detailed wave and uh, all of this detail is unlocked. Sorry, uh, David, I, I can't hear you anymore. Oh. Okay, so anyway, um, I can uh, I can cut in here if you want. Um, so the current progress is uh, demonstrates the next level of simulation pipeline. If you go to the next slide. So the idea here would be to generate um, perhaps a thousand pre-computed uh, tsunami inundation profiles and then to use uh, machine learning artificial intelligence methods to forecast or predict the um, run-ups. Um, so we would compute a library of routines or of simulations that would be used then to train the algorithm. and. What's going to be shown on the slide after this one is a simulation of a Cascadia earthquake, magnitude 9 Cascadia earthquake near, um, and how it might impact Tillamook, Oregon. So um, the idea would be to use GNSS um, uh, measurements at various locations along the coast to generate um, um, the input data for the learning algorithm from these thousand simulations and then to predict the run-up. So next slide, please. So the uh, hypothesized earthquake, uh, an example of it is on the left. It's a dip, slip, fall, thrust, fault, magnitude 9 earthquake. The displacements are shown on the inset, in the left inset, left top inset on the right. And then um, the inundation from that particular event is shown on the top right. Um, and if you click on the, the two bottom um, 
images there, they uh, are simulations that uh, can be run uh, and illustrate the general uh, ability of the uh, simulation to be carried out on uh, computational systems. So that's basically what we have to say. And I'm sorry that David's uh, microphone was having trouble. <clears throat> All right, now now to Attila. Yeah. My apologies for that for that earlier. Thanks very much. So. Can you uh, can you hear me? Well, yes. Thanks very much. So uh, good morning. Uh, next next slide, please. Uh, yeah. So good morning, uh, afternoon and evening, uh, everyone. This is Attila Komiati at JPR. I lead a, a group of scientists who have been uh, investigating the coupling between the uh, solid or ocean surface and the atmosphere, uh, resulting uh, ionospheric and atmospheric disturbances. And these disturbances may be generated by earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, volcano eruptions, and uh, events caused by anthropogenic sources. This is shown on the upper right plot using ground-based uh, GNSS observations impacted by tsunami-generated gravity waves, and they are intercepting the signals between the GNSS receiver and the G GNSS satellite. So the uh, uh, natural hazards can generate waves in the thermosphere or in the ionized part of the atmosphere, which is called the uh, ionosphere. The resulting waves uh, may be detected using ground-based and uh, space-based observations. One prime is example of this using uh, GNSS uh, ionospheric observations is shown in the uh, lower plot, uh, where we image the acoustics and gravity wave signatures using about 1,200 GNSS receivers following the uh, Tohoku Oki earthquake and tsunami. The movie shows the, uh, the propagating acoustic and gravity waves induced by the uh, catastrophic events, and the ocean wave height model also superimposed, mm -hmm. establishing concentric waves both on the ocean surface and the 300 kilometer up high in the ionosphere. So there is now an abundance of current and future GNSS signals that uh, one can use in real time to map out uh, coupled ionospheric signatures generated by seismic waves. Our research objective focuses on using GNSS ground-based and space-based GNSS measurements to develop new technologies for augmenting uh, uh, natural hazards early warning systems. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, we developed uh, under GDGPS uh, support and NASA ROSE's ESI as well as GNSS research team program support, the uh, GNSS-based upper atmospheric real-time disaster information alert network. This is what we call the Guardian network, which is the prototype operational ionospheric testbed to enable us early detections of tsunamis, volcanic corruptions, and other anthropogenic ha hazards. The URL is, is shown in the uh, in the slide. The Guardian uses uh, real-time total electron content TEC observations provided by GGPS network at JPL. This is shown on the upper left box. While the data stream is real-time, Guardian delays the stream by one or two minutes to enable uh, the user to wide wide variety of signal processing tools to use uh, for detection of tsunamis in near real-time. Specifically, JPL implemented two independent algorithms. One of them is the volumetric approach for real-time ionospheric observations uh, uh, designed by uh, Sapienza uh, University of Rome, uh, our dear colleagues, Professor uh, Crespi and uh, Michela online. Thank you. And the number two is the undifferenced phase data observations to detect and quantify ionospheric electron density perturbations induced by the expected tsunami. GDGPS provides an operationally robust and self-sustainable front end, which is required for global natural hazard monitoring system. It provides the measurements from a network of real-time streaming stations, a majority of which track multi-GNSS satellites. To real-time front-end processing of multi-GNSS data, we attached a deep learning framework shown on the low, lower left, which aims to train a generalized model for tsunami-induced ionospheric disturbance detection. This, uh, this is applicable across various uh, atmospheric conditions and geographic uh, areas. Detection of tsunami-induced signals can improve existing systems by providing uh, detection capability on open ocean, not possible with more conventional buoy-based early warning systems. In addition, we are also attaching an inverse modeling engine, focusing on inverting the total electron content perturbations caused by tsunamis, 
using a sophisticated first principle based model to estimate tsunami wave height and confidence levels using an ensemble Kalman filter approach. This is followed by evaluating the potential threat and recommend issuing warnings for affected communities. Next slide, please. Uh, we demonstrate a, a work of progress here. On the left, we show a GDGPS produced TAC estimates, and they are visualized together with ground uh, truth labels, along with classifications and classification confidence on the bottom for GMSS 24 satellite and ground based stations in Chile for the 2015 Illapel earthquake. On the right, we show a snapshot of our current uh, Guardian interface displaying GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and Baidu constellations using GNSS uh, ionospheric observations from real-time GNSS stations along the Pacific Ring of Fire. The different colors represent the different constellations, and the yellow circles indicate recent earthquakes as reported by USGS in real time. The time series in red color in the lower right indicate ionospheric observations between particular GNSS satellite and GNSS receiver that might have been impacted by a propagating tsunami. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the upper left shows the, uh, the current real-time GNSS network that we may be accessing in our processing. We are not yet using all available stations, as this is still a prototype and we are still fine-tuning it. On the upper left, we show a hypothetical distribution of real-time stations in case we have unlimited resources to turn all our ground-based GNSS receivers into real-time data streams. Uh, yellow color shows the ionospheric data coverage around the globe. Uh, the plot demonstrates that practically all seismic zones, including the Pacific Ring of Fire, may be covered with ionospheric observations, except for a small patch, uh, the red patch in the Aleutian Islands area, as shown in the, uh, in, in the plot. The lower plot displays a power of radio quotation measurements that require no ground-based receiver and could potentially provide uh, a much better crop with over ocean when ground-based uh, GNSS uh, coverage is limited to coastlines and island nations. For instance, COSMIC-2 ionospheric radio quotation measurements could be provided within a few hours after collection. In my view, the combination of GNSS ground-based and space-based observations are best way forward to increase temporal and spatial coverage of global ionospheric measurements. The next slide, and that's the last slide for, uh, for, uh, for this segment. In this slide, we summarize the steps forward, uh, uh, way forward. On the left, uh, I list the, uh, the, public, the uh, building blocks of the comprehensive ionospheric-based natural hazard capabilities, comprising of GDGPS-based network and pro processing engine feeding into the Guardian system uh, that we showcased in the previous slide. We are actively working on, on the third box, uh, block uh, from the top, which is to apply conventional uh, neural network, CNNs, in a process. Uh, training the generalized model for tsunami-induced ionospheric detection applicable across various atmospheric conditions and geographic areas. In addition, a parallel effort, as I described, being conducted uh, to apply NCARS uh, data simulation research testbed algorithm uh, to a wp gitten which is the JPL's uh, wave propagation model that we use to invert ionospheric data to estimate tsunami wave height and potentially earthquake magnitude, we are not quite there yet, that may be indicative of impending tsunami and other natural hazards. Using our comprehensive uh, uh, efforts, uh, in summary, we hope to add another important tool to existing toolboxes to detect natural hazards and potentially save uh, human lives and reduce uh, economic uh, damages. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, thanks very much. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, David and John and Attila. And uh, yeah, we would just like to make sure everybody knows that new members are welcome. Uh, we are hoping to build up some use cases, uh, either if you're interested in contributing to what you've already seen, or if you have another use case that you think would be a, a good contribution to this. We are working uh, with the ITU uh, focus group to actually uh, create an, an, an official recommendation of the ITU uh, on using AI in uh, natural disaster management. Uh, and of course, uh, making sure that geodesy is well represented because it really is underpinning a lot of the, the other technologies that are being uh, used in this. Uh, but if you have any, any thoughts, any ideas, or if you would like to 
to join us or if you'd like to uh, submit uh, an additional uh, use case, then uh, please do give us uh, a, a call or an email. And uh, we'd like to open up the floor for any discussion or questions. <laughs>